Hello guys, so first of all this is not a tutorial, this is just a process I go through uh, to do the presets I do and I just wanted to share it with you guys since I haven't had much time to make any videos, I uh, decided to do this for you guys. So what you just listened to is the result of what's about to come next. Okay, so let's start with init preset and I want to go to my globals and I want to make sure double click for typable values on controls is checked because I'm going to do an arpeggiated lead and what I want to do in order to do this is just drag and drop this here our first our LFO and I want to make my LFO have a grade of 12 and I'll just do this so I know it's working. Okay. So now I gotta go into my matrix and now if I double click this, I can say 12 ST for semitones. Right, so now I should, if I press E, That's right, so I got an octave up. So this is a all octave. And what I can do here is if I press shift, this will happen, right? And if I press shift control, this is gonna snap, actually shift alt, this is gonna snap to the different semitones. So E, F, F sharp, G, blah, 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 blah. So I can work, use this to create an arpeggiated sound. So let's say I want to start with my root. And then after two of these little sections, I might have a fifth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I want my fifth, all I have to do is count seven semitones. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I got my fifth. I can also do some octaves. I can also, also use thirds if I want to make it the minor or fourths if I want to make it the major. So, two, three. Or four. Actually. gets confused with this so one two three four five six seven new no. 
I gotta count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That gives me a fifth. So a third would be one, two, three. That's a third. All right. So I got a little section here. Let's see what I'm gonna do with it. Okay, so a good use for a macro to control the rate would be I'm just checking and uh, these three can work. And a good macro would be to control this and just go up to bar one, two. So these three are the ones that I want. I'll just leave it up there. And if I use my macro, it's too much. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, so let's change this texture. I don't like this texture. Not for I I'm gonna go in. Uh, oh my god, there's so many stuff in here. Uh, I just want analog. No basic shapes. Let me try a uh, square. Such a lovely sound, a square sound. Such roundness. Alright. Okay, let's filter this out. With a flange and you don't see much difference if you don't use... I don't know, it's a combo. If you don't use a little bit of... modulation on the cutoff. Okay. Okay, so I want this macro to control this as well. So what I'm thinking about is having it like going like that when it's slow and then as I increase the rate it starts going like and the rate will be around there. Something like that. So I can simply use that shape there. We could go like that. And All right, I'm happy with that. <clears throat> now in order to make this work, all I have to do is grab this, place it there, and make this go up so I can hear the maximum. That's too much. So I was looking at the, the graphic here and checking out if everything was alright and just 
making sure there's only three different levels of rate. Three that sound good. So we got that done. Bit of detune there. Okay, I kind of like it. But I gotta make this more interesting. So let's try. Let's try a little bit of banding here. Okay, that sounds interesting. So I already have this set up, so might as well use this and go like that. I don't think it works. So I'll just uh, right click, remove all modulators, and use a different LFO. Kitty. And I might want to use something else here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to menu and I'm going to render oscillator A warp, which is the sync warp. What this is going to do is now if I press off, that warp came all the way to this knob right here. I'm actually going to use this to change the texture. I like to have a texture knob, so... I'll use that for the texture instead of using an LFO. So I'll leave that for the texture. It's a funny texture. Right. So let's try some FM from the sub oscillator. I'll just turn that down a little bit. We'll change the octave. I like that. Aliens talking to us. <laughs> Let me check how the rate goes. Okay, now, let me just show you something. That's what's happening right now. I got a lot of stuff going up around here at the 100 mark, 100 hertz, and I, I don't really want that because you might want to use it. You Well, this is an appreciated sound. It's probably going to play when the kick and bass is going to play, so... I'm going to remove that with an EQ. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm trying to remove with an EQ, but... Still a lot happening down there, so EQ is not working. I'm going to try a sharp filter. High pass filter, obviously. Obviously. And because I want to make this sound big sooner or later, might as well do it now. So it's this will the compressor with multiband is so cool. It, you can have so such different textures at what what's going on already. And you got the low band, mid band, and high band. As you click on it, it shows you. It's at 100%. I can bring it lower than that or over than that. So it can go either way. Right. Let's try some distortion. You can get some cool effects if you modulate uh, the frequency here on the distortion. A cool one to use is very used. It's quite popular. It's down sample. Which works horribly on this sound. I don't think I need distortion here. I'm going to try and phaser or something like that. getting stuck here a little bit stuck I'm not sure what I want to do I'm gonna change the sound a little bit more one thing I'm sure of is that I'm gonna have a cutoff filter so just push this down place it there a cutoff filter where are you what's going on what's that all about Oh, too much resonance over there. I want this knob to be here when I'm there. But when I'm around here... I want it to be 
get around there. It's always good to have a little bit of resonance in there. Right, this is going to be crazy. Okay, so there's some interesting stuff going on if you move the knobs. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's try and do something else. We got this one on detune. Let's try this. Oh, of course, uh, we have to arpeggiate this sound as well. Well, not necessarily. I mean, we can have one on the root while the other one is playing. Let me pass through the filter. Make this guy go through the filter. That sounds horribly bad. Let me try something else. Oh, let me try something crazy, like a vowel. Do I have anything fast going on? This one is slow. This one is not connected. So I'll just use this one. Actually sounds better, the tune sounds more... In. Sounds terrible. I don't like it. Let's try and, um, you know what? Give him the same arpeggiated sound. So, again, do that. Come to the matrix. And 12 semitones. Like to put some uh I just name this. Delete that there. Make it more interesting with a little bit of pitch change. too sharp. This sound is too sharp. Now that I put the soft one here, <laughs> that one sounds extra sharp. There's two ways I can change that sharpness over there. Is my filter... It is on. I forgot that I have this fr frequency. Oh. 
I was removing too much low end, and uh, I actually need this because I'm, I want to remove some of the sharpness that's going on in there. And so I'll use. To, to, to a bell shape filter and where is gain okay there we go I don't want to kill it but just want to remove a little bit of that sharpness. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. Now what I want to do is give it some size. And usually what I do on my presets is I add a reverb, I put this down and a delay. And I gotta make I usually make sure obviously they're not before the compressor, only after. And I don't want to compress them. I might, I might, if I want I might want to compress the reverb usually no so I'll use a ping pong make this a bit more dynamic and I'll put this down a little bit and so this macro here is gonna control my reverb and obviously I don't I want want all that I'll find out I mean and my delay and the reason why I usually put the delay before the EQ is so that I can do... I'll show you. Actually, <laughs> I usually put my delay after, not before. Yeah, that's why. So I can do this. I think you know what I mean. So I call this size. I'm almost finished. And now I want to know with the size on maximum how this is going to sound. Just to maximize this a little bit, I'm going to come to my compressor and push it a bit of the gain. Okay, and that's it for this one. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Hope you it gave you inspiration for something. And yeah, I'll see you next time.